Welcome everyone back to your weekly weather updates and today we're going to be doing a different video uh, at least this morning we're going to be having a look at the record breaking cold spell which is currently about to impact uh, parts of the United States of America now do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you do like and subscribe now this morning I'm doing this update simply because the weather in the UK is starting to settle down a bit more um, and I do like to have a look at other global weather patterns as well uh, when they do become uh, of interest as this could impact the UK in the next seven to ten, ten days time as it will uh, uh, power up the jet stream again um, which could impact our weather so I'll run through the GFS run uh, for North America and you can see it doesn't look too severe on the pressure pattern. You can see there is a dark uh, blue blob which is an area of the tropospheric polar vortex so there's bitterly cold air within this and you can see this strong gradient where the jet stream is pushing this cold air southwards into parts of central uh, Northern America. And if we run through you can see an area of high pressure builds and we see uh, plunging uh, cold air uh, and it sweeps with the jet stream and it produces a quite severe winter storm early next week and you can see cold air to the north coming in behind this high pressure and then this low towards Florida heads up towards the east coast and could produce a classic nor'easter big snow but the most significant impacts from this is actually going to be the temperatures. So if we run it back all the way to the start and we put on the 850 HPA temperatures, you can see how cold the air is. Getting down to maybe minus 35 degrees at 850 HPA, which is truly Arctic temperatures. And you can see the extreme strong, uh, extremely strong temperature gradient. And this is powering the jet stream further southwards. And this cold air is going to reach even down into parts of Texas as we'll, and I'll look at some of the ensemble members in a minute. And as we run through, you can see it will produce quite a lot of snow on its, uh, yeah, on its western edge um, as it is cold air digs southwards, has weather fronts associated with it and it could produce a lot of snow as it approaches these areas. And you can see the bitterly cold air digs further southwards. As you can see, the sort of minus 30, minus 40 degree temperatures won't get too far southwards as it's pretty much impossible for it to get much further southwards than it is because if you think about the latitude of where this is this is getting into parts of uh, the, the, the latitude of sort of this uh, areas of sort of southern Canada is on the latitude of the UK and northern Europe so um, it can't get much further south than that uh, as it does warm up but you can see some bitterly cold air minus 20 minus 25 degrees does get all the way down sort of towards Mexico um, and this clash of very warm air, 15, 20 degrees, it's sort of a 40 degree temperature difference. Um, it's going to power up this winter storm that you can see slides up the east coast and you can see there we've got 10 degrees on the southern and eastern flank and around minus 20 on its northern and western flank. So about a 30 degree temperature difference which is Im Im immense and it's going to produce a lot of snow and a lot of precipitation with that and that's why we see these massive winter storms as you can get that temperature contrast where in the UK temperature contrast can only maybe get to 10 degrees um, which is why we don't tend to see massive winter storms like this with a massive dumping of snow could be seeing many feet of snow from this but it's really that cold air digging southwards bringing extremely cold temperatures, pretty record-breaking cold temperatures to certain regions. Um, and if we have a look from the Northern Hemisphere view, if we pull back, you can actually see it's some of the coldest air on the planet at the moment, heading into um, heading into uh, America, it's only really rivaled with uh, some very cold air towards Siberia. So it's absolutely bitterly cold. Um, and if we have a look at the two-meter temperatures, you can see how it plunges sort of minus 20 degrees southwards um, throughout this end of this weekend into next week. It's not the best view looking at this, as you can't really see its exact latitude, but we'll look in a minute on a better view, which shows you that. If we go back to North America, you can we'll put on the temperature deviation, uh, and you can see how it really is getting down to minus 12, 
degrees below average um, and on wet central it doesn't go further down than minus 12 but it's definitely around minus 20 degrees within that extremely cold temperature gradients um, and uh, temperature deviations and again if we go back to the northern hemisphere view you can see how it plunges southwards um, and it's pretty much the coldest um, anomaly of air on, on, on the planet at the moment extremely extremely cold now if we go on to uh, the GFS ensembles and this is Bismar Bismarck uh, which is in North Dakota um, and you can see the temperature at 850 HPA is around 32 degrees 31 32 degrees uh, negative so below freezing with well, the average at this time of year is meant to be minus 4.8 so we're almost 30 degrees below average in Bismarck in North Dakota, which is truly exceptional. And they are seeing the depths of the cold at the moment. It's going to increase over the coming days to around minus 15, minus 20. And eventually, by the next weekend, it'll get to around average again. But it is truly bitterly cold air. And if we have a look at the dew points, you can see getting down to minus 36, 37 degree dew points, which is, again, truly Arctic air. New snow depth, there is not too much snow with this, um, in Bismarck at least, as it's got no fuel to it. If you think about bitterly cold air being very dry, it doesn't have any fuel so uh, to create any um, snowy conditions. So there'll be a lot of ice, there'll be a lot of uh, very cold temperatures. But in the centre of this cold, it's not going to be particularly snowy. It's towards the edge of the cold where it collides with the warmer air is where we could see a lot of snow. And I'll show you that in a minute. If we look at the two meter temperatures, you can see it is around minus 30, minus 25 degrees. Come next weekend, it's getting to around freezing, and then the following week, maybe four or five degrees as a high. So it'll be truly tropical uh, compared to this week. 30, 40 degree temperature rise in the space of about a week to 10 days. It is truly exceptional. If we now go to uh, Oklahoma, uh, well, actually, I want to go to. Kansas City first, sorry, which is a bit further southwards um, from Bismarck, and again, it's in Kansas, of course, and it's getting down to minus 20 at the moment, and it will peak around minus 21, so Kansas City is much further southwards, um, but it just shows you, it doesn't, um, it, the cold, bitterly cold air can't get much further southwards, as it will just warm up, so only around minus 20, minus 21 degrees is down there, and again, that's 20 plus degrees below average. Kansas City is not too unusual this time of year to see some snow. But getting down to this temperature is truly exceptional. And you can see by next week, maybe four or five degrees, 850 HPA. And if you think about it, Kansas's average temperature of around zero degrees at 850 HPA this time of year is actually warmer than the UK. The UK's average temperature at 850 HPA is around minus 3, minus 4. And in the last week or so, we've been seeing it down to minus 10, minus 11, minus 12 degrees. So we're 5, 6, 7 degrees below average, and that's how cold it was this week. But imagine it being 20 to 25 degrees below average. It is truly exceptionally cold. Now, being further southwards, colliding with the warmer air, there we see some significant snowfall over the coming days. Um, Again, quite a significant winter storm could be brewing with this, and I suspect these snow totals would be a little bit understated, and it could be up to maybe a foot of snow potentially in some regions. If we have a look at the two meter temperatures, you can see getting down to minus 20, minus 15 degrees by day, potentially getting down to minus 23, minus 24 um, come Monday. But as you see, in about 10 days' time, we could be seeing highs of 10 degrees, 9, 10 degrees um, again. So really really rise uh, a big rise in temperatures now if we go to oklahoma city so yeah this is in oklahoma so a little bit further southwards in kansas uh, next state southwards you can see it gets down to maybe minus 18 minus 19 degrees again significantly be average when their mean is 5.4 degrees so that's almost 10 degrees warmer than the uk but they're seeing temperatures getting down to minus 18 minus 19 minus 20 degrees which is about five six degrees colder than the 850 HBA temperatures we saw with the beast in the east in the 2018, uh, in 2018 winter. So it truly is, a, it's very difficult to imagine for, for us in the UK to see how exceptionally cold these temperatures are. Um, but you can see in about seven, 10 days time, 
it's getting up to maybe 10, 15 degrees at 850 HPA, which could give temperatures up to maybe 15, 20 degrees. So truly exceptional. And if you have a look at the new snow depth, again, very significant snowfall as it collides with the warmer air coming up from the south. The moisture from the Gulf of Mexico going to power a big winter storm. You can see some very heavy snowfall with that. If we have a look at the two meter temperatures, you can see highs of maybe minus 10, minus 11 degrees, lows of minus 20, minus 23 degrees. And in about weeks to 10 days time, it warms up and some ensemble members have it breaking 20 degrees, um, which is sort of summer, for like sort, of like sort of UK summer-like temperatures in the space of seven days, going from minus 20 to plus 20. It is truly exceptional, and this is why sort of America sees some of the weirdest and wackiest weather, just simply because of these huge temperature contrasts and power significant storms, and can give um, very uh, significant conditions and impacts as well with this. If finally, we have a look at Austin, which is in Texas. So this is getting actually towards um, the Gulf of Mexico, where we see hurricanes spawn in the summer. 850 HPA, it's only getting down to minus 5, minus 6, because simply it can't get a lot colder than that, because it's colliding with much warmer air, and you see the average is around 10 degrees this time of year. But it's that we have to look at the dew points, which get down to potentially minus 20 degrees, which shows you how cold the air mass is. So even though the upper airs are not particularly cold, it's very cold through the whole atmosphere, very dry air, and it will be falling as snow. And if you look at this new, new snow depth, potentially for some big, heavy snowfall in Austin, Austin, Texas, 20 centimetres on one of the ensemble members, potentially even more than that uh, in some areas. In, in Texas and down in, in the south. If you look at the two meter temperatures, you can see although the upper airs are not that cold, on the surface could be taken down to highs of minus 11, minus 12 on Monday, maybe even down to minus 19. And then in about a week's time, like literally in a week's time, so a week, a week uh, from this Monday, it could be highs of 15, 20 degrees. So it is truly exceptional and this is why we see these massive massive winter storms brewing in america now if we have a look at the um weatherchannel.com uh, we've got focusing on uh, focusing in on um oklahoma city and if we put the temperature um, map on and we zoom out you can see brutally cold air over Canada at the moment. Again, not unusual to see this very cold air, for, for, for it, but for it to be plunging southwards, it truly is exceptional. You can see where Bismarck is, seeing bitterly cold air, and then you go a bit further southwards towards Kansas City, which is just here, so getting very cold. The Oklahoma City, and then getting down all the way to Austin, which is literally next to the Gulf of Mexico, where it is uh, very, very warm, 20 degrees in parts of Mexico, uh, Florida, so it just truly is exceptional. You can see where that winter storm is going to brew, heading up towards the northeast, and that could be see seeing some significant snow. And what I do want to uh, do is zoom out, and you can see where this brutally cold air is. It's only really rivaled in parts of northern Ca uh, northern Russia and Siberia, perhaps maybe parts of uh, truly parts of northern Canada, northern Greenland, getting towards the North Pole. But if you just look at its latitude. Oklahoma City, so Austin, is in the same latitude as parts of North Africa, Saudi Arabia, Pakistan, Iran, parts of Northern India, um, where it is currently 20, 25, maybe even 30 degrees, um, which is truly, truly exceptional. Um, it just shows you how actually mild the UK is in its winters. Look how far, mu mu how much further northwards we are, and we don't normally see widely lows getting below minus five degrees, which is what it's been really around this week, where they're seeing minus 20 degrees, and they're much further southwards than us. Um, it just really shows you the power of the, 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 the jet, uh, the, um, the Gulf Stream pumping much milder air into the North Atlantic, allowing our temperatures to stay much higher than it should be really for our latitude. If you just look along our horizontal latitude, you can see pretty much everywhere on our latitude is minus 20 degrees at the moment. Um, so yeah, we are, if you do, don't don't enjoy very cold air, we are actually very lucky um, with the, the, the Gulf Stream allowing our temperatures not to get too cold.
But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little video where I've looked at uh, temperatures across the pond, uh, and you can see how these could impact our weather in the next week to 10 days as these colder temperatures will power up the jet stream and it'll be interesting to see how it amplifies the jet. This could be the reason why high pressure is building over, over Europe as the jet stream amplifies and it sinks southwards in the middle of the Atlantic before jumping up northwards bringing up milder air and warmer air from Spain. So we'll have a look at that probably in this evening's video and we can see on some of the knock-on effects from this very brutally cold uh, air in northern America at the moment. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe to and I'll see you again for another video this evening.